Hi everyone, I'm Sari and this is my cat Luna and you are watching Sari Knits which is my knitting podcast and I think today's episode is just a short one to kind of keep you updated on my life. Uh, I don't really have anything <laughs> much to show you. I, I was trying to gather everything uh, I have on my needles here next to me as I usually do. I go through all my things and I pick up everything that I'm knitting at the moment and and everything I have planned and then I realized that I don't really have that many things on my needles at the moment which is really weird and I kind of feel like casting on a lot of new things but at the same time I have really enjoyed uh, working on on a few few projects at a time. Um, I usually have um, maybe five things on my needles that I uh, need quite actively. I've talked talked about this quite many times here on my my YouTube channel, but uh, I usually have something totally mindless, uh, something that is a uh, stockinette stitch. Uh, it doesn't have to be something that is uh, totally stockinette or, or ribbing, but uh, that there's a, a part that is uh, stockinette or, or ribbing, for example, um, the sleeves or and uh, at the body of a colobock uh, pullover, such as this one, um, or the brim of a hat, or something that I don't have to concentrate on that I can just like um, mechanically knit uh, without having to look at it or count anything or or um, remember anything so that I can for example talk to someone and and put the knitting down for for a second and and then pick it up and just continue with my hands without having to to stop talking and uh, and uh, engaging in other things. So my hands can just work because I can knit without looking at it if it's something simple. Um, so I can I have been knitting for such a long time that um, my hands know what to do and I don't have to look at it or concentrate on it. So I usually have something like that and then I have something small uh, that is portable such as a pair of socks or or a hat or maybe a sleeve, um, something, it, it could be a bit more complicated, but it has to be something that fits into my purse um, or my handbag when I go out. So I never leave the house um, without uh, a knitting project. I kind of feel like naked without it. Uh, so I usually have something small on my needles for, for those occasions. Then I have a couple of uh, things that I'm super excited about, something that I have uh, recently cast on and, and just want to work on. And then I usually have a couple of uh, like those long lingering whips that I dip into every now and then, but I don't really work that actively on. And even on top of that, I usually have a couple of things that are dormant, so they might be left um, unattended for for a while and and then <clears throat> I pick them up again and they might become those more active whips but um oh man you have such long nails don't do that don't do that um yeah can't remember what I was saying Luna interrupted me um a few videos back, uh, she was next to me here purring during the whole video and I think you, most of you enjoyed uh, hearing her purr more than, <laughs> than me talk. So here she is again and she is called Luna because she has this uh, yellow mark around her eye. She's now quite old so it does, it's not quite as bright as it used to be. But when she was younger, it was like this really bright yellow and it was almost like a... Um, it looked like a moon, 
moon around her eyes, so that's why we called her Luna, because it's uh, Italian for for the moon. So Luna's been with us since uh, 2011, and she's a rescue rescue cat. Very much loved. I think she's enjoying being with us, as you can see at here. Um, yeah, but I was talking about my my knitting projects, and I think um, something changed um, uh, this year when I I quit my my day job and I started to work um, with my own business. Okay, here's our other cat. Uh, that's Marlon. He is uh, younger. He's I think he's three three years old now, and he's also a rescue cat. He's been with us since he was a kitten. But uh, yeah, so um, what I was going to say. So yeah, <laughs> com completely uh, distracted by by my cat today. But I was talking about. Um, my work situation now that um, I'm a self-employed knitwear designer. So I think it has to do with me being able to concentrate on, on things more. That I have also been working um, with just one or two projects at a time. So I no longer want to cast on um, so many things and and uh, change between them but i want to work on usually only one project at a time or two and that that is really um unlike me i have i i think um it's i think it's also because um now i'm trying to to do this um knitwear thing with more intention and because I no longer have a day job that I get a paycheck from so this is now my only um, form of income so I no longer can just like let things hang for for such a long time because I have to keep everything moving and going forward and it was often with me earlier that I needed something and then it might take half a year before I write the pattern and then there is still the test knitting and even after the test knitting it might take me like a month before I got the pattern out. So the process was really long, uh, mostly because I was so overworked and I wasn't able to make any any schedules or plans or like plan ahead anything because uh, I never knew if I had time to work tomorrow. So I couldn't say that, okay, this is coming out on Friday because I didn't know if I had any time between now and Friday to, to do anything about it. And even if I had time, I didn't know um, if I had the energy or or the mindset to do that work if I was too tired. So I think it, it's a lot due to that, that I wasn't able to concentrate on anything and, and I think I was also um, working on so many things um, at the time that because I couldn't concentrate, so I needed distraction from everything. And and um, now that um, I've been able to relax more and and um, plan ahead more and so on, I think that's one of the reasons why why. Um, I no longer have the need to to have so many things on my needles all the time and I kind of like it as it is now because it makes my work so much more clear 
um, high knit one thing and then I wrote the pattern and have it tested it and it's moving forward all the time and and after I finish knitting one thing then I start another one and it also makes it easier for me because um, when I knit something I have only one thing that I'm working on and then I start to write the pattern and it's not like I work on five things and, and then I have suddenly five patterns that I have to write and have tech edited and tested it so that everything's happening all the, at the same time and then uh, when every all, the, all those five patterns are coming out at the same time then I'm kind of swamp, swamped because um, I should have time to promote everything and so on and I didn't have that time earlier so uh, now, now I'm trying to work with more more intention, like I said, and and that also means that I have less things on my needles at the time. That doesn't mean that I don't have uh, plans for new things. I have so many plans that I can't wait to cast on, but I no longer, or at least at, at the moment, I don't have the time to have everything on my needles all the time. So I think that's something that has changed. Of course, I forgot to put my my phone. I usually always put my phone on on um, mute when I start to film. And of course, today when I forgot to do that, it starts beeping. But now it's muted, so it shouldn't bother us anymore. Uh, but yeah, I was <laughs> um, was going to talk to you about my my current uh, knitting projects and now I have been talking for such a long time about everything else so the point was that um, I filmed my previous video on Saturday and today is Thursday and kind of felt, felt like um, I don't have much to show you I have only two whips here with me and that feels really weird and I have two more things that I'm working on but those are kind of the, like the, the dormant type at the moment I should pick them up again and and just start working on them one of them is the Prosecco pullover I don't know I haven't felt like touching it for, for a while and the other one is the salvia pullover that I should uh, do some calculation for the sleeves and for some reason I've been just putting that um, off for a while but I just I should just uh, do the do the maths and then I could cast on the sleeves and and it would be uh, working perfectly but anyway uh, I have one new thing and then the um, summer celeste pullover but Luna is uh, sleeping on it at the moment so I will show you the new new whip first so if you have been following me for for a longer time um, you already know that um, I love off-white cabled pullovers those are like the favorite um, knitted thing ever at least uh, in my opinion and uh, I don't even know how many um, like basic classic um, cabled pullovers I have on my Pinterest boards and every time I see a new one um, I have to pin it and and for a, for a long time I had the kind of feeling that I can't really I can't cast on um, of white cabled pullover because um, I'm always making them and I already have so many and um, I'm designing another one and it's boring and then one day I think it was last autumn I realized that actually I have never designed um, 
white cabled pullover and I don't even own a white cabled pullover at the moment. I knitted one a few years ago but I gave it away to my sister and then I have the Ava pullover as well um, but it has the, the um, different contrast color shoulder details so it, it's not like a basic um, of white pullover either so I really don't have a cabled pullover and well the thing about knitting is that I have quite a many cabled pullovers and of course um, it doesn't have to be that the sample photo is, is a white pullover that it, it would be considered as a, a white pullover because you can knit it in, in any color you want but but I even though I have been knitting cabled pullovers for such a long time I myself don't have any uh, white cabled pullovers so I decided uh, before Christmas that um, I need to fix that and first I made Adelita vest before Christmas and it's now being deck edited at the moment so it's coming for test knitting soon before you ask ask about it and then I started started this one so I wanted to make a raglan pullover that is uh, seamless and top down and I know it needs a bit more uh, designing than um, a bottom up similar pullover. I've talked about this quite many times here on my, my YouTube channel but um, for, for knitters it's easier to decrease in pattern than to increase in pattern. So if you would be making a bottom-up um, raglan, you would have already established the, the um, cable pattern at the hem and worked the whole body and when it came down to, to the raglan decreases, it would be easier to, to keep in pattern as you are um, decreasing because you know what is happening because you have have so many uh, full pattern repeats already here so you know what what is happening but when you are increasing uh, you don't have any anything to, to guide you so you really have to um, um, be more uh, careful with the increases so that they go don't go wrong and with this I probably have to do quite a many charts for probably for each size and I need um, charts for, for, for both sleeves and for for the back and then because I made the neck shaping then I probably also need these these parts for for each side and for for each size and so that means there will be um, at least four charge for for each pattern so that's quite a lot of work but I think that's still easier than to try to describe um, what is happening so I think chart is chart is easier in that way so that is what I've been making so um, this is started um, without the neckband so it's actually started here and then worked back and forth and then after joining uh, at the front um, then it's worked in a round downwards but I wanted to see the fit so I picked up stitches along the, the um, neck opening and I made already the neckband so I can I can see how it fits and it has this um, honeycomb pattern here on the front and back and also some cable patterns on the sides and then there's one cable going down the raglan 
on on each each dragon. And after that, it's going to be um, on the side. It's going to be moss moss stitch. So that's that's how it's going to look like. And this is knitting up really quickly. Um, I started this uh, the day before yesterday, and I actually spent the ho almost whole day knitting this one. And I originally started this already on Monday, but um, there was something that I didn't like. Um, for example, I had just um, two of these honeycombs on the sleeves and it looks stupid because it was so small so I wanted to make it wider so I added one one more pattern repeat of the honeycomb pattern and the small things like that so um, like I said I started started it already on Monday but I read everything back on Tuesday morning and my husband has been traveling again the whole week so it's been just me and Theo alone at home for the whole week and Theo lost his first tooth on Sunday I don't know if it's because of that or for some other reason but he has been sleeping really badly for the whole week um, he's been crying a lot and having nightmares for the whole week. I don't know why. And um, on the night between Monday and Tuesday, mm, he came to sleep next to me and he had nightmares for the whole night and he was kicking me and uh, I couldn't really sleep at all. So I was super tired on Tuesday morning and I took him to the daycare and after that I just came home and spent the whole day uh, watching uh, Bridgerton <laughs> on Netflix and and knitting so I was knitting knitting that one and trying to take it easier um, and it was definitely worth it <laughs> I'm really happy now that I'm self-employed that uh, I can really listen to my my body and and see that if if I need a break then I can I can have one so I always have the option that um, rather than doing computer work I can always sit and knit because that's also my work and the faster I need, the more uh, patterns I have for you to to um, knit as well. Maybe I can now take the second thing from Luna. So this is the summer Celeste of my needles. I showed this to you already on Saturday. I made some progress with this one not that much but some so you can see now it's starting to form the pattern so here we go and for some reason I don't know why but this is taking me forever to knit I don't remember that being the case with the original Celeste pullover I don't know if it's um, because of the yarn or because of the smaller needles or, or why but for some reason this is super slow for me at the moment um, I have kind of like a photographic memory so I don't usually have to look at the charts that much so I look at the chart and then I kind of like remember it and I, I can like remember what what round I'm on and and how the pattern goes so I don't have to check my charts very often I kind of I, I have this ability that I can just move move the charts around and I, I can remember uh, like really complicated and intricate patterns really easily 
but for this one I don't know why now I'm starting to to remember the pattern and it's starting to become uh, more intuitive for for me but especially the first rounds were really hard for me for some reason I don't know why I just had to keep checking the chart all the time and counting stitches and and uh, going going back and doing things again for some reason I don't know why but it just didn't stick with me at first but now I think now it's starting to roll I think it's because I'm starting to see how the pattern forms so it's uh, getting easier for me but um, the start was really slow with this one and also because I'm working with uh, this uh, Knitting for Olives uh, Cotton Merino and the colorway is called Mousy, Mousy Rose and as usual I will write all the uh, yarn details and everything below this video so you can check them there so if you have ever knitted anything with, with um, a cotton yarn you know it's quite hard it's not really stretchy and uh, at least for me, I, I knit slower when I, I'm knitting cotton or, or bamboo or, or um, linen or something that um, is not wool. So I think because this is, I think, 70% cotton and then 30% merino, I think the cotton content is one of the reasons that it's making this um, so slow for me. And especially the, the bubbles I showed you in my previous video, I think, um, how I'm making the bubbles. So I'm always knitting seven stitches into, into one, one stitch and then on the next round I'm uh, passing these stitches uh, over one another so that I'm decreasing them back to just one stitch and that part is taking super long for me. I think it's um, one reason is that I'm working with uh, with two strands of yarn so instead of having like uh, seven uh, loops of yarn on my needles uh, I have 14 so that is one of the reasons why this is um, slow and also because it's not uh, as stretchy so I have to kind of like work a bit extra to get the, the stitches to pa pass on or over the, the first one so I think that's slowing me down but especially with this one um, I don't really mind it taking me so long because um, I know that this is something that I will use a lot during the summer and know that I will love wearing it during the summer because it has uh, cotton in it so it's not that that warm and sweaty and you can wash it more easily because it has cotton in it so I know that um, I will love using this one so that's why I don't mind it taking me a bit longer to make. Uh, I think it's the same one I talked to you about my silk tops uh, last summer. I made a couple of uh, summer tops using Knitting for Olives Pure Silk. And the silk yarn is especially hard and wasn't really nice to knit at all. And I was also holding it double. So um, I wasn't really enjoying the knitting process because of the yarn but then again I know that um, I love using the silk tops so that's why it was okay for me to to knit them because I knew that that it wouldn't feel so hard when I was wearing it so and that's why um, it was okay to, to work them so I kind of always try to balance between 
uh, having things that are super fun to knit versus the things that are uh, lovely to wear. Because sometimes those things um, match, so something that you make is at the same time is super nice to to knit and also super nice to wear, but uh, those things aren't necessarily always um, the same. Uh, for example, um, I like using unicolor clothes um, before Instagram. I mostly used white, gray and black. And I think if I only needed things that I most mostly like to, to wear, they would be white, um, gray and black and, and super simple. But that's all, not always what I kind of like, what I enjoy to knit. If I only needed things that um, I like to knit, and didn't think about uh, wanting to wear them at all, I would use even more color. Uh, I love um, sampling really colorful yarns at yarn stores. Uh, lately uh, I have stopped buying them because I know that I don't necessarily like using the colors even though I like them as games and, and I enjoy working with them. Um, but I kind of feel like there's really no point of uh, using a lot of time and also money on yarn if it's not something that um, gets any use after that. So there's like really no point of just like making a lot of things that then take up space in my wardrobe and never get worn. So I've been trying to, to combine those two things and try to work more like with more intent and mindfully with the things that um I mostly will also like to to wear uh, I started um uh, cotton no the Temsel merino top with Katya yarn uh, last week and I showed it to you on Saturday but I ripped it back and I'm doing something else with the yarn. Um, didn't like the lace, so that's why I don't have it here with me. If you're wondering, and also, sorry, Luna, sorry, Luna. I finished the two by one hat, uh, but as you can see, I haven't woven in the yarn ends yet, and it's still totally unblocked. So it became this long. I just kept going until I ran out of yarn and then I have folded the brim triple. So it looks like this. So it's super nice, super warm. And this is based on my 2x1 hat pattern. So I'm going to update the pattern next week with um, this uh, other yarn weight. So the original 2x1 hat was knitted in fingering weight yarn and this is worsted weight. So it's going to, to have um, a new version. So if you have previously bought the pattern then you will get um, the new version automatically. Um, updated to your Ravelry library. But that was everything I had for today. So um, I will film a new video again next week and maybe I will then have something else to show you or at least uh, more of these these uh, two projects that I have on my needles. But that's it. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye!